Hey, Daria. Yeah? What can the digitizer scan? Anything! Like how big? Well, it can scan objects up to 6.6 .6 pounds and 8 inches wide by 8 inches tall. <laughs> what? Daria. You know what I really like about this? What, Daria? It's that folks like myself can't always find what I want on Thingiverse. I don't want these earrings, but I want something very similar to it. Personalized just for me. And with the MakerBot Digitizer Scanner, you can do that, right? That's right! <laughs> So guys, the Wii U price just dropped. 50 bucks. Something people have been wondering, A, if this is ever going to happen, and B, will it make a difference in sales? Nothing can really compare to the glory days of the Wii. It was the first of its kind. It was some exciting shit. 3.45 million sales of the Wii U to date, worldwide. Why so low? People think it's just an add-on for the Wii. Its purpose can be misleading, and the advertisements were slim to none. Mistake number one and two for Nintendo. Most importantly, well, to me, can you tell me what you think of the lack of first-party games? All the third-party titles have pretty much been failures and are on the fence about staying. And the longer Nintendo waits to put out first-party software, the more consumers will hesitate to buy. Mario Kart, Zelda, Super Smash Bros, Super Mario, plus countless other games have been announced, but with no release date. Come on, guys. Obviously, price cut tends to be the trending move for Nintendo. The Nintendo 2DS is a thing. Damon here with maybe the strangest thing you'll hear today. Oh, it is not April Fool's Day. So, I can't believe this. <laughs> I've just had a video pop up in my feed. Two, not three, 2DS. Does not include the ability to display games in 3D. No, I, I, it's a bit of confusion inside. See this tweet, it says Nintendo 2DS. Still with me? I don't understand it. It's a, uh, just. <sighs> it's in 2D, it's in 2D, who? 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 I don't know who. Nintendo is who. Announced Wednesday, the Nintendo 2DX. $130 runs all games made for the 3DS, but without the 3D effects. 3DS has been doing great, even over the past three months, as the best-selling piece of gaming hardware. But tablets are being considered a threat to Nintendo because children love them and the apps are cheap. So I don't blame Nintendo for not offering up their legendary games to those devices. Is this bad for Nintendo? Not having the greats within reach of children like Super Mario or Donkey Kong available on all those tablets? Bad Nintendo. So to better acquaint children with these great characters, I guess they wanted to come up with this. So, my questions for all of you include, does this device make any sense to you? I mean, it's good that it's cheaper, $130, does not allow 3D use because for kids, long-term use of that isn't healthy. We care about the children. It also comes out the same exact day Pokemon X and Y does. Gotta catch them all, suckers. It plays all games the 3DS plays. Parents are in general more apt to buy this for their kids if they don't already have a 3DS. Who doesn't love the MakerBot? I know that if you have one, you absolutely must love it. We have one here at Parts People and I pretend like I can print anything I want, but really I just asked my brother to do it for me. The MakerBot has stepped up and brought something more to play with. Digitizer 3D Scanner. Like the MakerBot, it will cost you a pretty penny, but it completely opens up the new realm of personalizing 3D printing. First unveiled at South by Southwest this year, any 3D printing lover has been waiting to hear about this. Not to worry, for 3D design beginners, no 3D software designing or CAD experience is needed. It essentially scans, creates a file, and is sent off to be printed. All you do is place the object you're interested in onto the turntable and switch on the MakerBot. Once nice and fired up, lasers will scan the complete surface of your object, where it is then matched up with a full list of data points representing its geometry. And in a whopping 12 minutes, gosh, I have to wait that long, for physical objects into digital designs? Yes. Digitizer sends an STL file, which is then ready to be sent to your 3D printer. Any 3D printer, actually, but optimized to work with MakerBot, MakerWare, and Thingiverse. Perhaps you would like to alter your cute kitty cat invention. Find her, scan her, then make her sleeker, larger, or smaller. Third-party modeling programs are optimized to work with this device just for tweaking. 
For more information on the new 3D scanner by MakerBot, please visit the link in my video description below. News of Parallel Access hit this Wednesday, a program that lets you use Windows and OS X on your tablet, blurring the barrier between tablet and desktop operating systems. Parallel is most well known as virtualization software dating back to 2006 when they launched something allowing Mac owners to run on Windows OS. Mind-blowing capability at the time. But today, they're hitting up a new level, bringing desktop apps to the iPad iPad cannot run virtual copies of an OS designed for other computing devices, so Parallels Access is remote control software, meaning the apps you are using are really running on a powered up internet connected Windows or PC. It is unique in its manner to give Windows or OS X a very iPad-like feel in an intuitive and useful way for consumers. Full-fledged Mac and Windows apps will run as if they were made for the iPad. Great for users that have that occasional need to edit or recover a file stuck on their home PC. Setup is easy. Download a client for your desktop, install Access on iPad, um, that's it. No clutter to look at once installed. All your apps are grouped into a simple and customizable launcher menu. iOS touch gestures are there, and access allows for native iOS actions like copy and paste. Cost, however, is $79.99 per year per computer you use it for. Quibbles exist. Quibbles. Display has been said to be on the grainy side sometimes. Tiny toolbars and drop down menus aren't always fun to use on a tablet. Some finger gestures are hard to work in programs like Word or Photoshop. And some moments of significant lag from poor internet connectivity were also reported. So besides the quibbles, what do you think? Be grateful for all my dedicated viewers out there. For all of you, feel free to smash that like button. Subscribe if you like tech news. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye. Adios. I know that one. When you try to kiss me